Happy Monday, everybody. That is Billy Harner. My name is Keith Rad. This is Slice of Life. We are working through our phases here. Baseball will be back this week. And as we wait for all that fun stuff, we do our best to make you smile for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes on some days as best as we possibly can. And we'll kick it off this Monday morning with my favorite social slice. Uh, this is the feeling when quarantine is lifted, stay-at-home orders will be... Uh, Whist away, we'll have fans in the stands. It'll happen this quickly. <laughs> so, Bill, this dog is amazing. There's that moment where he realizes that this. This ropey structure is holding him back from being that lovable Frenchie that he always wanted to be, his full potential. And then finally, he he gets that, hey, I'm free. See ya. <laughs> yeah, I think this is going to be all of us as soon as everything is done, uh, where you, you won't really know what to do with yourself. And all of a sudden, you'll be able to go places and see your friends and eat inside, maybe go to a movie, maybe go to a ball game, and stop for a minute, look around. And then just take off and try to do everything all at once. Uh, so th this dog is all of us. I, I love this video for sure. Um, for my social slice, I've said it before. I'll say it a million times. I love Duke. Um, from the time I was seven years old and I saw Bobby Hurley play for the first time uh, during his freshman year, I was hooked. Um, and the entire time that I have been a Duke fan, Mike Krzyzewski has been the head coach of uh, the Blue Devils. Um, he is on my Mount Rushmore of, of, of uh, icons in life. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet him in person. Um, after Duke's most recent championship win, uh, I went to an event and he was there and I went up to meet him and my wife was with me and she said, thank you for making my son, or my son, thank you for making my husband happier than I ever could. And he laughed and said, for his sake, I hope that's not true. <laughs> so that's uh, my, my Coach K story for when I, I met him uh, for, for one, of the, one of the times I've met him. Um, and the whole time I've admired what he's done as a coach uh, on the court and what he's done for the program, um, but more uh, sort of what he's done as, as a person. And um, just, you know, he started the Emily K Foundation and all these different things. He's, he's just, he's a person that you want to root for and a person that you are happy is on your team, I guess. Um, but through all the titles and all the, uh, the gold medals that Coach K has won, um, I've never been more proud to have him associated with a team that I love than when I saw this video. Take a look. Black lives matter. Say it. Can't you say it? Black lives matter. We should be saying it every day. It's not political. This is not a political statement. It's a human rights statement. It's a fairness statement. Over the last couple months, I have had an opportunity to see more, to listen more, to think more and to understand at a deeper level. So have you. Yeah. So have you. And do we not see the problem, the disease, the plague that has been with our country for four centuries? So the full thing is uh, about two minutes and 46 seconds. So if you have the time, I, I highly recommend watching the entire thing. Um, it's been viewed over 3.2 million times, um, which is pretty impressive. And the fact that um, Duke basketball has the, the most followers of any co collegiate sports program, they have 2.2 million followers on Twitter. Um, that for comparison, the Red Sox have 2.1 million followers. Um, and the Mets have a million. So um, Duke basketball announced this one, and this is the most interactive anything that they've ever had on any of their social media platforms. So it's getting a lot of traction, which is, which is good because the sentiment in it, I think is such a strong one. And the fact that it's coming from him, um, I mean, obviously I'm a Duke fan, so it probably has more uh, rings, rings true or hits closer to home, I guess with me, but you know, he's, he's an older person. Um, he's a well-respected person across all sports, all fields. Um, he's a very recognizable person. Um, and my favorite part of this whole thing um, when he was in the uh, the West, at West Point, he was a he was a cadet at West Point for his, his college career, um, and he makes reference to the cadet's prayer 
um, in his video where he talks about choosing the harder right instead of the easier wrong. Uh, it's a very simple idea, um, but it's a message I think all of us you know, need to hear. Um, and he says we've been choosing um, the easier wrong as a country for four centuries. And uh, it's very simple, very, uh, just breaking it down basically to the core. Um, but it's, a, it's very impactful as well. Yeah, I think Coach K is, he's, there's so many head people out there. That's like a hard way to say it, but he's a head coach and you watch him and you, he's been there for years and years and years and the success that he has is amazing. And he's with Team USA and everybody in the NBA, college, high school looks up to Coach K because he is the head coach of, I mean, in your eyes and in, in 2.2 other million people's eyes, the best college program in the country. And the fact that he can lead people and be so involved with with uh, social movements and getting people up and how he yells at the Cameron crazies to treat other play other teams when they come in there with respect. And he's he's willing to call a spade a spade and and make sure everybody's doing the right thing. So as much as people hate on Duke and uh, if you're a North Carolina fan, you may not like Coach K, but you sit there and you respect him. And as you're watching it, you almost feel like you're in the locker room as well. Everybody wants to be part of something that he's he's leading. So he's a great voice. And uh, again, you watch the video, he's just calling it out for what it is. Say it, say it. And it's, and it's, and it's beautiful. So I, I love it. And um, you know, it takes, it takes a while for someone to get to his place and he's gotten there and he's, he's crushed it while he's up there. And we all, we all respect his message and him willing to, to take a stand on some things and put it on a big platform like that. So uh, yes. Yeah. yes. I, I get people hate Duke. I get it. You know, yeah, I'm, right, I'm right. Fan, I get it, but you know, this is sort of what you want your leader to be, um, regardless of whether it's a sport or a business or a country. Um, this is the kind of thing you want the person who you're going to look to, to lead you into a new place or lead you into change. This is the kind of thing you want that person to, to stand for and, and to be saying. So, um, again, happy to be a Duke fan, but more than that, this isn't a sports thing. This is just, um, someone who's a well-respected person and whether it's as a coach or just a, a leader among people. Um, I thought this was a great sentiment to share. Time for chicken parm heroes. We go from one hero to the next. Bill, I'm going to go to you on that one. We go down to Alabama. So uh, Dominique Moore is a teacher at, uh, uh, I'm terrible at saying, I'm going to say Bessemer City High School, whatever. It's, it's, I apologize. That should be just a footnote on everything. Like message sent from my phone. I apologize for mistakes. Like that should be, I apologize if I butcher the name of someone you love or a place that you're from. Um, so he's a, he's a teacher at Bessemer city high school in Alabama. Recently they held a graduation ceremony. Um, and he noticed that one of his students was alone and didn't have uh, family or friends there to help him celebrate this momentous occasion uh, in the life of, you know, an 18 year old. We all remember our high school graduation and what of a big deal it was. Um, so Moore jumped into action. Um, he decided that he was going to go, he went up to the student and was asking him what was going on and, and just to see what was going on. He said he, he didn't, none of his people were there. So he, the, uh, the, the teacher offered a ride home to the student. Uh, it's an unnamed student, so it's very difficult to sort of <laughs> get through this without stumbling over myself because you want to say a name, but it's an unnamed student. Uh, so while he's giving the student a ride home, they start talking and uh, he decides rather than just give him a ride home, he's going to take him out for a celebratory lunch probably something that every other student was doing with their family, go have a meal. So they go to the Cheesecake Factory. While they're sitting at the Cheesecake Factory, they start talking. Uh, he's get, getting to know more about his, his life situation. Um, and he finds out that the student has to go work that evening for Amazon, um, but doesn't have a ride. So the teacher gives him a ride to his job that evening. And when he goes home, he posts on social media about his interactions and, uh, his what happened with the student and the fact that he had nobody there for his graduation um and it strikes a nerve with with people because we've all been you know that 18 year old person and you know it's such a big deal to you to graduate from high school uh, and you want to share it with your your loved ones and he didn't have anybody there with him so he, he shares this story and it strikes a nerve with people and people will start donating money because uh, that's what people have been doing now because you can't really go out and do too much else um so they donate money and uh mr moore then takes the student and opens up his bank, a bank account with him for the first time and helps him purchase a car so that he can drive back and forth to his job uh, going forward. Uh, just an unbelievable story of a, a teacher, you know, teachers all over the place, 
our heroes and do amazing things like this. This is just one of many stories. Uh, but this is more of a, you know, a teacher taking an interest in a student and one little thing like taking a guy out to lunch, um, the butterfly effect it had on everything else that happened in this kid's life and potentially changed the path that he was going to be headed on going forward. Um, so just a beautiful story. I love when there's stuff about teachers doing great stuff. And uh, especially in this case where, you know, one small post on a social media account gets thousands of dollars from, you know, strangers that had no interaction with this kid and uh, can help, you know, change his life and, and make his life a little better. Yeah, I just got a, a major hankering for some Asian lettuce wraps from uh, Cheesecake Factory, which, uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of Amazon and speaking of giving back, uh, Amazon, which is also Whole Foods, is stepping up as is Lowe's, but Amazon and Whole Foods mainly uh, for their frontline workers are gonna be giving back on the Amazon side, $500 million in bonuses to their employees. I mean, think about all the employees, full-time, part-time that they have uh, worldwide. $500 from Amazon to its full-timers, 250 to its part-timers. I mean, it's just, it's just a little something to say thank you. I mean, we there's all, you know Whole Foods all over New York City and they keep them clean, they keep them orderly, they have the nice line out front while you have to wait for everybody to get in. But you know, if it's clean, it's, it's done right. That, think about that. I mean, we had to shut everything down, but the supermarkets, the, the heaviest place of contact, really, in my opinion, for everybody on a daily basis, uh, you have to keep that clean first and foremost. So the people at Whole Foods, and uh, we know how Amazon, I mean, you're probably buying packages as well. It was taking weeks uh, because people were just flooding uh, Amazon with, with getting some you know, toilet paper, paper towels, whatever it was. So uh, just nice to see companies giving a little bit of uh, something back. I mean, you know, Amazon gets these big tax breaks and everybody says, well, hey, what about us? And, you know, they're at least giving a little something back. So um, nice to see. And uh, it's it's getting hard on everybody. I mean, as this COVID in other places is starting to disappear, it's not. I mean, people are still out of work. So uh, for the people who are at work at Amazon working extra hard, uh, this is nice from the people from above. Yeah, and I saw uh, Target is doing something similar where they're uh, rather than a, a bonus, they're keeping their their uh, crisis wage, uh, right. which is $15 an hour. They're keeping that for everybody as well. So um, your increase in wage during the COVID time is now your your new, I guess, salary. So that's uh, that's impactful. I mean, here in New York, where there's you know the minimum wage is $15, it might not seem like a lot, but they're doing it you know nationally. So um, that's a, that's going to impact a lot of people as well. So good, good for Target as well to, to help in the same kind of cause. Time for sports. We'll talk a little bit Mets today. Uh, first, the 2020 situation, but we're going to throw it back to my birth year, Bill, 1993. Eesh. That is, <laughs> that is a tough one for me to swallow. Uh, so I saw this video today because it, it happened on this day back in 1993. And uh, I started that flashbacks to uh, my own experience as a member of a grounds crew. Um, so this happened in 1993, the first year of the Florida Marlins uh, at Joe Robbie Stadium, which has now changed name 17 times. Um, and, well, I just, just watched the video. It's, it's just, it's terrible. And they had to go to carry it. <laughs> They're covering the outfield. <laughs> now they've got a, I mean, a long way to go to get that tarp on the infield. I would think that there's got to be a better way to do this. Instead of a, a tarpaulin, they're going to have to re-spell that and call it a tarp pulling contest. They're on the infield. And now they are bogged down. I mean, you could see this coming. <laughs> You've heard of Fan Appreciation Day? This could be the first fan participation night because that's what's needed to get this tarp over on the left side of the infield. What is going on? <laughs> this is great. They cannot move it. So the heavens opened up. It's a football stadium with a baseball field. So the tarp was a little bit further than they wanted. And it's Florida rain, man. So that stuff comes and it doesn't go. So uh, it was pouring. And I, I mean, you've been in this situation, Keith. You've been on a ground screw. Pulling tarp in the rain is one of life's most miserable experiences. 
especially when there's fans there, because you know that they're all hoping for somebody to fall. They're all, all they want to do is sit there and watch baseball. And uh, it is it is terrible. And it brought me back to one of my times when I was an intern here with the Cyclones. Um, we had a storm that came through that was unreal. Like the game was canceled basically immediately because the field was, was flooded. Um, and we put the tarp down. We came in the next day and the tarp had blown off the field, was now in the stands along the third baseline with some of it dangling over on the surf avenue. And there was like four of us. And we were like, now what the heck are we supposed to do? Um, so I felt so bad for these guys. And Ralph Kiner and Tim McCarver and then John Franco laughing at him and Eddie Murray laughing at him. That's, that's four Hall of Famers or close to, I guess, uh, laughing, at, laughing at your misfortune. Not what you want to see. But I felt so bad for these guys. And I was not feeling schadenfreude. I was, I was in, there, in their skin feeling, feeling the pain. There's so many things to unravel here, um, you know, literally and figuratively. Um, that should be one of the things where people say, yeah, hey, man, you work in sports. It's got to be it's got to be awesome. Right. You know, life's good. It's like, well, have you ever pulled tarp? Um, it's usually make or break for a lot of people in this business. Uh, I've, I've stopped at um, four, five baseball teams in my short, young life. Uh, and some places I didn't have to pull tarp and other places. You had to pull tarp. You had to pull tarp after the game was over at 11 o'clock. And then you had to get there in the morning at 8 a.m. to take it off because who else was going to do it? You're part of the team uh, at about 7 a.m. So uh, when that's why we don't like to say the four letter word during uh, the season. It's not happening now, the season. So we can say R-A-I-N. But it is brutal. It's brutal. Um, I think the best part, though, about pulling tarp and you probably experienced this. I haven't I haven't pulled tarp in a, in a couple of years, luckily. MCU is turf now, um, but when the game's going on and you're out there pulling tarp, but then the sun comes out and you start to pull it out and the fans are cheering for you. It's like, wow, hey, maybe I am doing something great out here, but it's like, no, idiot, just grab the rope and pull. Um, but yeah, that's that's my experience. Pulling tarp is, uh, I'd say, bittersweet. Yeah, the only time as a front office employee you ever get cheers is uh, when you're taking the tarp off the field. So. I missed that part of uh, not having a tarp here, but I am very glad. And my dry cleaning bill and my sneaker bill and everything else that are ruined by all the turfus and everything else that's on a traditional field. Uh, I'm, I'm very glad that I don't have to worry about that anymore for sure. Yeah. Two, two, two pairs of clothes for work uh, every single day. Those, those days are gone for now. Um, but the days uh, of 2020 but Mets are back. Uh, the, the 45 man summer camp team, has been announced and you, you got to look at some of these names, you know, you forget, Hey, Dylan Batances is on the Mets now and things like that. But uh, for some recent Cyclones, like Kevin Smith, a uh, lefty pitcher who uh, Cyclones drafted, so say the Mets drafted out of Georgia was with the Cyclones in 2018. He crushed that year. And then uh, last year, 2019 really flew up the system. So uh, he's on that list as a non-roster invitee. So it's just, Great to see a roster come out, Bill, because then you know that's the first step. Things are in motion behind the scenes. Uh, you know, Wednesday, July 1st is the day people can start reporting to camps. Games going on July 23rd, 24th. But um, nice to see some names on a list. It means baseball. Yeah, it seemed over the weekend, uh, I guess July 23rd, the first game is supposed to, supposedly going to be the Yankees and the, uh, the Nationals. So Max Scherzer and Garrett Cole each throwing five innings because they haven't, you know, had a full warm up to get it ready for the season. Um, so that, that was over the weekend and then teams started to put out their, their rosters last night. Um, the, some of the Blue Jays players are starting to complain because they still don't know where they're reporting because Toronto is waiting to see if they can get approval to have the, the Blue Jays play in Toronto. So still a lot of T's to cross and I's to dot. Um, but like you said, good to see um, some names on a list that are going to show up and play some baseball in a couple of days. So we're getting closer. Getting closer indeed. Another day, another show. Slice of life. That's Billy. I'm Keith. Uh, Bill, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody.